Hello, welcome to the second lecture of Sustainable Architecture and Energy module. My name is Katarina Lukettinga and I will talk about sustainable architecture and energy management in general. So what is sustainable architecture? The diagram on the left gives us a hint of what sustainable architecture is all about. It's a very broad topic. Some parts like energy, waste and water management or renewable energy resources will be explained in separate lectures. In this lecture, I will focus mainly on good examples of sustainable architecture and, and energy management. So the first example shown on the right picture is Anna Heringer's and Eike Roswak's Smeti or Handmade School in Bangladesh. Sustainable architecture explained according to Wikipedia is architecture that seeks to minimize negative environmental but also social, ecological and economical impacts of the building. It concerns about development of space and ecosystems at large. It also concerns that our actions and decisions today do not inhibit the opportunities of future generations. Energy efficiency over the entire life cycle of a building is the most important goal of sustainable architecture. On the pictures below, we can see Tien Tegen Stue. Uh, this is a Norwegian architecture office, and they built these buildings in Thailand. Let's talk some more about energy efficiency in architecture. As anything else, every building has ecological or carbon footprint. To learn more about carbon footprint, watch the video embedded in the page below. This is because we need energy to produce building material, plan, build, maintain, and eventually dismantle or demolish the building. We shouldn't forget that we have to appropriately dispose once used building materials. This is uh, what we call the life cycle of a building, and we will talk about it later on more. Sustainable architecture comprises more than just ecological or carbon footprint. Parts of the, this term is also something called human development, which includes life expectancy, literacy, wealth, and or welfare. In the picture on the left side, uh, we can see a typical family from Mali on the roof of their house with all of their belongings. More about this you can learn on, learn on the link below. And you can also see more examples of different families and a uh, carbon footprint. And when you talk about energy efficiency in building, the story is not that simple because of all this already said. However, for the sake of, sake of this lecture, uh, let's say that we can divide the overall energy consumption in building into embodied energy and operational energy as consumed energy minus gained energy, and this is energy gained with passive or reactive systems which are part of the building. We can see this balance more elaborated in the diagram on the right side. Here we cannot see embodied energy or energy used to build and produce building material. However, when we start thinking about building or designing a new building, we should ask ourselves uh, some important questions, and the first one should be whether it is necessary to build at all, because greenest building is the one that is not built. It is usually better to reconstruct or convert an existing building. These are the pictures of one architect, his name is Ricardo Bofil, home and office which used to be a cement factory, it is located in Spain. We should always think about we should always firstly think about environmental impact of a building, especially moderation in the use of unbuilt natural space or ground. Furthermore, some important terminology concerning sustainable conversions are adaptive reuse. Uh, this is a process of reusing an old site or building for a purpose other than which it was built or designed for. Here we must be aware of local building regulations and heritage preservation regulations if those ex exist for a particular building. And when designing a new, we should always design for flexibility and desirability to maximize the building life. 
All of these pictures of our old structures reused for a new function from dif different parts of Europe. The picture on the, on the left is Tate Modern Gallery in London, which with its latest annex designed by, by uh, Swiss architects uh, Herzog de Meron. Second principle of sustainable design is that uh, if there is a need to build, it is important to build the smallest area possible, like tiny houses, non-permanent or easily dismantleable structures. Uh, here in these pictures, we can see some examples of this. First on the upper left above is Makoko Floating School in Nigeria by Kunle Adeyemi. He's an architect, architect of this school. The school is floating on the sea. Uh, then uh, on the right side above is Tin Tegens to us orphanage in Thailand. These are very small units. Then on the left picture below, uh, we can see uh, one architect's thesis project, and this is uh, actually a renovation of an old school bus, which became his home. And the bottom right picture is a typical tiny house because this movement is becoming even more and more, more popular lately. Another important issue concerning sustainable design is avoiding building sprawls, and we should always, instead of building sprawls, focus on building sustainable urban or uh, rural settlements like uh, eco-districts or eco-villages. Uh, here in this picture we have uh, the example of uh, first UK's eco-district. It is called Bedzed. It is located in near London and Bedzed actually means Beddington Zero Energy Development. You can learn more about it at these links. There are of course many other uh, examples of this kind of eco-districts or eco-villages, especially in Europe no nowadays. Uh, one similar example is uh, Wauban in Germany near Freiburg, and there are of course many others. I encourage you to learn more about this. Of course, we should always design according to user's lifestyle, financial, social, and other preferences. Sometimes sustainable design interferes with, with lifestyle of inhabitants because our habits affect sustainability, what we eat, where we work, what kind of transportation we use, how we spend our leisure, leisure time, what kind of comfort we expect. All of these affect energy and resource consumption. This is why education of inhabitants and sometimes change of their habits is part of sustainable use of the building and it is very important. The pictures below show region villages by Danish architectural collaborative called EFFECT. First of these communities will be built uh, this year in Netherlands, basing principles of design are energy positive homes, doorstep doorstep high yield organic pro food production. You can see in the picture that every dwelling unit has a garden for food production. Then a mix of renewable energy and storage, water and waste recycling, empowerment of local communities. And you should learn more about this at this link here. Another important way of reducing energy demands of the building is by using passive solar design. This basically means that we should design according to local conditions, climate, topography, vege vegetation, orientation and surrounding buildings. General principle of passive solar design is the use of sunlight without active, me active mechanical systems. These buildings are designed to let the heat into the building during the winter months and block out the sun during hot summer days. Ideal site uh, location and house plan is maximally exposed to the sun from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in winter time. This way heating energy can be reduced from 25 even to 75 percent. These principles are well known from ancient times 
and they said that even a Socrates house was built this way. In these pictures and diagrams you can see uh, basic schemes in which way to imply this kind of design. There are different types of passive solar systems. First, I will talk about direct gain. This is a type of passive solar design system where we have living space as a kind of a solar collector, especially most, fre most frequently used rooms in house are suitable for this. The black and white pictures on the left side of the slide show us this principle alive. These are the plan and interior space of Frank Lloyd Wright's house in United States. It's actually a torus-shaped building oriented towards the south with a uh, stone wall, wall acting as thermal mass. Then we distinguish indirect gain as a passive solar design system. Here we have attached greenhouse or tromb wall that act as a solar collector. You can see the pictures on the right side of this slide regarding this indirect gain. Tromb wall is a wall built on the south side of building, exposed to the winter sun and shaded from summer side sun. It's important that this wall is made of high thermal mass material painted, painted in dark colors and separated by thin layer of air from glass facade in front. In this way, tromb wall uses basic greenhouse principle that heat from sun passes through glass and warms thermal mass, which then releases the heat to the interior during colder win winter night time. We can see this elaborated on the pictures on the right side. The lower right picture is actually Mr. Trump's house. This is the first use of Trump's wall. And you can learn more about passive solar design system in uh, Edward Mazria's book called Passive Solar Energy Book. Uh, you can see this uh, book in the picture in the middle of this slide. Important elements of passive solar design systems are thermal mass. This can be any kind of masonry work, like, uh, like brick or stone, concrete, but also some other materials like rammed earth, adobe wall, or even water. We can see the picture of this uh, on the slides on the right side. Above, we have Steve Byers' house in USA, which has some kind of tromb wall uh, with water barrel barrels painted in black, in front of which is south glazing. This house also has these big shutters, which can act as a reflecting surface to enhance solar and gains, uh, gains when opened, or they can prevent excessive uh, heat losses or uh, gains when closed. Then we have solar windows. These are any kind, kind of south-facing windows. For, for this reason, House plans should be elongate, elongated in east-west direction as to have maximum south-facing windows. And of course, we have solar, solar shading. This is a control system that prevents excessive summer sun to enter the building. This can be any kind of ex external shading devices like shutters, blinds, roof overhangs, even the city streams in front of south facade uh, can act like uh, solar shading. We can see uh, this principle alive on the pictures on the left side. Uh, the bottom left picture is passive house uh, made of plaster straw bale on Ezerhof estate by Swiss architect uh, Werner Schmidt. On the right picture below we can see swimming pool as thermal mass in attached sun space. We can use passive solar design principles to cool the building too. This can be in the most simple way, cross ventilation. In more temperate climates, this is quite suitable. But in uh, more hot climates, we need a double roof, like in this health center in Burkina Faso by Kere Architecture. Or even more complex systems, like different kinds of solar chimneys, like uh, this French school in Syria. These systems can become even more elaborated, like wind catchers in this vernacular architecture in Hinderbad Sid in Pakistan, or wind towers 
like in this picture from Yazd in Iran. Here we have these wind towers, which are part of uh, Khanat systems. We, that is actually part of water supply uh, systems uh, that cool the building down. I encourage you to find out more about this and to find out more the, about passive solar design components on this link below. When designing according to local climate and natural situation, it is important what kind of materials we use. I would start this part of lecture with the term embodied energy. This is a uh, sum of all energy, energies required to produce any goods or services or applied to building. It means it is energy consumed by all of the processes associated with production of a building. From the mi mining and process processing of natural resources, to manufacturing, transport, and product delivery. It can be measured for every material, and it is measured in megajoules of energy needed to make a kilogram, kilogram of a product. Generally speaking, the lowest embodied energy is for locally produced natural or minimally processed materials. To reduce impact of embodied energy, we should design a long life, durable, and adaptable buildings. Ratio of embodied energy uh, to operational energy is estimated uh, 30 to 70 percent. Operational energy is energy consumed throughout the lifetime of a building for uh, heating, cooling, hot water production, etc. Life cycle assessment is more complex technique to assess environmental impacts associated with all the stages of product's life from cradle to grave. This is actually kind of an open, open cycle, and it examines the total environmental impact of a material or product through uh, every step of its life, from obtaining raw material, through mining or logging, all the way through manufacture, transport to a store, and using it in home, to disposal or recycling. Uh, we distinguish this in contrast to cradle-to-cradle -cradle design. This is actually a regenerative or biomimetic design. It models human industry on nature's processes, viewing materials as nutrients circulating in healthy, safe metabolism. This is a closed cycle design. Uh, important terms here are in this exact order, reuse, reuse, uh, reduce, reuse, repair, recycle. Uh, but we must be aware that the recycling usually spends quite a lot of energy and is actually downcycling. That means that it converts waste material into materials of lesser quality and reduced functionality. We distinguish th this in contrast to upcycling, and upcycling is actually creative reuse, uh, which is a process of transfor transforming waste materials, uh, useless or unwanted product products into new materials of, or products of better quality or of better environmental value. We can see this uh, principle alive in these pictures on the left side. These are actually uh, rural studios design designs. Uh, the picture above is a uh, carpet of or Lucy's house, where we have um, old uh, thick layers of carpet from carpet factory leftovers used as a uh, facade wall. Uh, then we have uh, on the bottom left picture Yancy Chapel where they used old car uh, tires filled with earth as a staining wall and plastered with, the, plastered with earth. And on the bottom right picture we have a uh, windshield chapel uh, where they used old cars uh, windshields to make this glass facade. Besides compromising the environment, some materials used in building can be har harmful to our health too. Here we can distinguish biological agents, bacteria, fungi, molds, and spores. Then chemical agents, different chemical compounds, heavy metals, fibers, and particles. And physical agents, these are uh, ion imbalances, electromagnetic fields, radio frequency radiation, etc. Sick building uh, causes are frequently pinned down to flaws in the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Up to 30% of new 
and remodel buildings worldwide may be subject of complaints related to poor indoor air quality. All this can be prevented with the use of natural and mineral minimally processed building materials or with increased ventilation rates, proper and frequent maintenance or heating ventilation air, air conditioning systems, then the replacement of water or mouth stained ceiling tiles and carpeting, and of course with indoor planting of toxin absorbing plants as in this picture, picture above. When we talk about materials for exterior building envelope, except materials for finishing facade and roofing, we distinguish load-bearing structure materials of high compressive or tensile strength. You, these are materials of high specific gravity usually. These are concrete, steel, and brick, uh, which are higher on the body energy, in contrast to stone, wood, bamboo, adobe, ram dirt, which are usually materials of lower embodied energy or CO2 emissions. Then we have uh, thermal insulation materials. Uh, these are usually lightweight materials of no compressive and tensile strength. Uh, these are polystyrene like styrofoam, then polyurethane, polyurethane, glass and mineral wool, which are materials high on embodied energy. Then we have straw bale, sheep wool, cork, cellulose and hemp, which are lower on, the, on embodied energy and CO2 emissions. And materials for both of these functions, which are different kinds of lightweight concrete, hempcrete, and papercrete, etc. We should always try to use materials of lower embodied energy and easily reusable and recyclable materials. But sometimes materials of higher, higher embodied energy significantly lower operational en energy, as in case of thicker thermal insulation. Three rules of sustainable building is insulation, insulation, and insulation. This is, of course, a joke, but uh, super insulation as a design approach was an, uns was an uns ancestor of passive house design we know today. On the pictures below, we can see how different materials are suitable, suitable for different climates. On the left picture, we can see uh, hostels in China near Shanghai made of stone, ram dirt, and bamboo by architect Anna Herringer where she employed local, local craftsmen and their skills for this project. And on the right, how, uh, on the right picture, we can see house in completely different climate uh, near Ontario and Canada, which is made of straw bales with passive house standard. And all of this brings us to uh, next important sub subject. Energy consumption in building. You could hear more about this in the previous lecture, but here it is important to know that this has to be measured and calculated. Buildings get certified, certified according to this calculated energy consumption in different categories, which are labeled with letters from G to A+. Pictures above are of so-called S-house in Austria, which is one of the first passive houses built with straw. Uh, this means it has A plus standard in terms of energy consumption and is made, uh, it is made entirely of natural building materials. In this case, it is a timber construction with straw bale thermal insulation, plastered with clay and uh, with tim timber cladding facade. Again, here we have a uh, passive solar principle applied because you can see in this left picture, which is a picture of South Passade with uh, very open glass windows, and the right picture is the picture of North Facade, which is quite close and um, still. More important terms when we talk about energy consumption in building are lower energy house, or so-called three liter house, this corresponds to a house that uses approximately three liter fuel oil, oil per square meter living space a year. That is less than 30 kilowatt hours per square meter a year. And it is certified with letter B. Then we have passive house or one liter house, which uses less than 1.5 liter of oil to heat. And it is certified with letter A. And here we have example of another passive house uh, one, or one liter house, uh, which is also straw bale house, um, 
This time it's prefab prefabricated tim timber construction filled with pressed straw. Then we have zero net energy house or zero, en zero energy building. That means that total amount of energy used by the building on an annual basis is roughly equal to the amount of renewable energy created on the site. Built example here is from Australia and it is a rammed earth house. Then we have plus energy house, which produces more energy from renewable energy resources over the course of a year than it imports from, ex from external resources. This house is from Den Denmark and it has huge south facing slope windows with a system that can fill the windows with polystyrene balls in winter time to pre pre prevent excessive uh, loss of heat or in the summer time to prevent excessive heat gain. Then we have an energy autarkic or autonomic house. This means that the building is independent of third parties concerning energy consumption for living and uh, these kind of houses are self-sufficient regarding energy consumption. They are also called off-grid houses. And here we have uh, on this picture a uh, Monte Rosa cabin which is a high alpine building, uh, which is presenting also a high degree of energy autark autarky of over 90%. Passive house standard is one of the standards to achieve very low energy consumption for maintaining, for maintaining comfortable indoor climate. Here are basic principles of this kind of design. It employs continuous insulation through its entire envelope without any thermal bridging. You could hear more about thermal bridges in a previous lecture. Uh, the building envelope is extremely airtight, preventing infiltration of outside air and loss of conditioned air. Then it employs high performance windows and doors. Typically so-called passive windows are tri triple paint with low E glazing uh, filled with arc on krypton to prevent heat transfer to outside space. It also uses a form of balanced heat and moisture recovery ventilation and uses a minimal space conditioning system. At least 75% of heat from the exhaust air is transferred to fresh air by means of heat exchanger. This usually means using other types of renewable energy sources. And of course, uh, we have SOAR again, uh, which uh, exploits the sun, sun's energy for heat, heating purposes and to minimize it in cooling seasons. You can find out more at this link here, which is actually a uh, official Passive House web page. Similar to passive solar technologies, uh, green or living roofs and walls have been known from ancient times. A sod roof or turf roof is a traditional Scandinavian type of green roof covered with sod on top of several layers of birch bark on sloping wooden bo uh, roof boards. Until the late 19th century, it was the most common roof on rural log houses in large parts of Scandinavia. The top left picture is from Iceland, actually. Advantages and envir environmental benefits of green roofs are they reduce heating and especially cooling needs of a building. Then they reduce urban heat island effect, top right picture, and the one just below show this. Then they reduce storm water runoff. Uh, they also filter uh, the water before it goes into sewage system. They also filter pollutants and carbon di dioxide from air. We can uh, distinguish intensive ed and extensive uh, green roofs. They vary on depth of earth layer, height and mass of plants planted, and the need for maintenance. Extes extensive roofs are more common. Uh, they have plants like sedum species or mosses planted. The bottom right picture is green roof on Renzo Piano's Academy of Sciences in California. And the bottom left picture is Patrick Blanc's vertical garden on Jean Nouvel's Musée de Caibranly in Paris. Here are some more examples of intelligent energy saving methods like earth chips. Earth chips are type of passive solar houses made of both natural and upcycled materials such as earth packed tires. Um, 
Our chips are designed and marketed by Michael Reynolds from United States. This kind of design addresses six principles of human needs. Thermal solar heat and he first thermal solar heating and cooling, then solar and wind electricity. Then uh, contain, uh, they contain sewage water treatment. Uh, then they are uh, built with natural and recycled materials. They have water harvesting and food, food production. Top right picture is house designed by architect C. Arc and Christian Miller in Val, Switzerland. This building uses the same basic idea as our ships, and that is constant soil temperature throughout the year to reduce uh, heating demands, heating and cooling demands of the building. Bottom strip of pictures show a reconstruction project uh, of social housing high-rise buildings by French architects Lacaton Vassal. We can see here before and after situation of the same spaces or building facade. As we are coming to an end of this lecture, I would like to mention the problem of waste. We will talk more about waste management in another lecture, but here I wanted to emphasize the importance of avoiding construction waste, especially at the design phase. Buildings should be designed so that after its lifetime, every building component can be reused or at least recycled. In this way, we can avoid waste as such, or at least we can avoid uh, uh, energy consumption to properly dispose or recycle waste. This is my last slide. Thank you for your attention. Uh, please check out the links below for more information and goodbye.